hi friends i am nirmal and today our topic is the managerial economics part 2 so the managerial economics generally refers to the integration of economic theory with business practice it deals with the uh, use of economic concepts and principles of business decisions making managerial economics is does constituted of what part of economic knowledge or economic theories which is used as a tool of analyzing business problems for rational business decisions managerial economics can be viewed by most modern economist as a practical application of economic theory in using effectively the firms scarce resources so the now we discuss about the role of fiscal policy in economic development fiscal policy refers to the guiding principles of the financial work which are constituted by the state based on political economic and social development task under a certain period its purpose is to regulate aggregate demand through government spending and tax policies on the other hand and increase in government spending will stimulate aggregate demand and increase the national income correspondingly a decrease will depress aggregate demand and reduce national income on the other hand a tax is a kind of construction strength to national income therefore the aggregate demand and the national income will restrain though increasing government revenue now we discuss about the objectives of fiscal policy so by fiscal policy we means the government tax efforts public expenditure and public borrowing though this the government can be effectively encourage consumption investment and saving habits and also restrain them or restrict them for example suppose there is a inflation in a country inflation implies that the people have high purchasing power and so they demand goods to curve this the government may raise the personal tax and also the corporate tax similarly by altering its expenditure on various public projects the government would be able to influence the prevailing economic condition public borrowing involves government issuing bonds and encouraging common public and other institutions to buy them so the principle of equity in taxation taxation traces its origin to the ancient times as a major source of revenue needed for government's kingdom monarchies and even dynasties had an elaborate form of taxation imposed on their subjects to source funds that were used to run affairs of the government these tax were subjective and biased depending on those power advancement in education led to important studies on the possible forms of taxation that reflected the aspiration and welfare of the people owing to this therefore adam smith uh, adam smith as the father of the modern political economy carried out an extensive study in public finance seeking to give an in depth analysis of taxation now we discuss about the foreign capital what is foreign capital foreign capital or investment has become significant part of sources of funding for various projects in every country 
this source of funding has received the attention of both the government as well as the corporate sector that there has been increasing reliance on this source for planning and execution of projects by the government as well as the corporate sector foreign capital can come into a country in different form let us first understand these forms of foreign capital before discussing the need for foreign capital so forms of foreign capital direct entrepreneurial investment in this form of foreign capital the foreign investor can start a company abroad mainly for the purpose of establishing its branches and subordinates or uh, in other other countries so economic policies to control inflation inflation has to be controlled otherwise the extent of demand done to the economy will be something substantial and the economy would take a long time to recover from the effects of inflation in this direction of control inflation the following are the theoretical measures available these measures could be classified into three groups monetary measures fiscal measures and other measures so now we discuss about the monetary measures so monetary measures are step taken by the central bank of a country as the head of the monetary system these measures are usually referred to as the quantitative credit control and qualitative credit control so now we discuss about the type of unemployment the population of an economy is divided into two categories the economically active and the economically inactive the economically active populations labor force or working populations refers to the population that is willing to able to work including those actively engaged in the production of goods and the services employed and those who are unemployed whereas unemployed refers to the people who are willing and capable of work but are unable to find suitable paid employment the next category the economically inactive population refers to people who are neither working nor looking for a job examples include housewives full time students individuals those below the legal age for the work old and retired person now we discuss about the national income accounting in india according to the first report of the national income committee national income come estimate measures the volume of commodities and services turned out during a given period counted without duplication this means the total volume of goods and services produced in a year in a country is valued in monetary terms to obtain the national income of the country concerned regarding the measures of the economic national income it could be done in three different ways depending upon the interpretation of concept of national income if if national income uh, is considered as a flow of goods and services then the method used is called product method and now we discuss about the economic uh, economic dualism so economic dualism refers to the existence of a developed sector side by side with an under developed or un, under um undeveloped sector we will come across to the uh, coexistence of sophistications and primitive characteristics in every walk of life for example in the urban areas one will find the use of modern technology in the production field as well as household while in the rural areas the age old antiquated techniques will be used in the production as well as in household 
this dualism retard economic growth that is the substantial sector in the rural areas will put down whatever little economic progress is achieved with the developed and modern sector now we discuss about the role of government in economy and economics pers perspective so the question of government interference in economic activities has been debated for a very long time by the economics while the uh, early economics consider economics as a handmade of politics the modern view is that politics is the handmade of economics with the growing importance of the role of government in economic welfare the modern economic firmly believe that the sphere of government in economic development has no boundaries whenever there is no unity among the economics about the extent and mood of government intervention in the economic sphere hence we can identify the following political ideologies regarding the government interventions in an economic so uh, now we discuss about the unemployment the meaning of unemployment the unemployment causes and the unemployment effects uh, in a country the economics describe unemployment as a condition of jobless within an economy unemployment is lack of utilizations of resources and it eats up the production of the economy it can be concluded that employment is um, inversely related to productivity of the economy or productivity of the economy unemployment generally defined as the number of the person it's the percentage of labor force depends on the populations of the country who are willing to work for the current wage rate in society but not employed currently unemployment reduces the long run growth potential of the economy when the situation arises where there are more i either resource for the production and no man power leads to wastage of economic resources and lost output of goods and service or services and this has a great impact of government expenditure directly now we discuss about the principal agent problem overview example and solution of the principal agent problem so the significant discussion is in business economic is principal agent problems in organizations a principal is a top authority who hires agent to act on his her behalf while an agent usually aim to achieve the objects of the principal a principal agent's problems arises when the activities of an agent impacts on the principal interest although agents may seek to attain the goals set by the principal but may sometimes fail to carry out those target the conflict between um, shareholders as principals and managers as agent is a good example of principal agent problem when ownership and control is divided between the principal and the agent is an organizations these give the agent opportunity to pursue the goals that may not agree with the desire of the principals now we discuss about the profit maximization versus shareholders wealth maximizations profit is obtained by uh, subtracting total cost that is tc subtracts subtracting total cost and from the total revenue tr under the assumption of the neo classic theory a farm will aim to produce a level of output where the difference between the total revenue and the total cost is the greatest the maximizations of tr and tc is the equilibrium condition for a profit maximization farm 
this is because once the farm is getting the most profit from a particular level of output and sales it is, it will not be incentivized uh, to alter the level of output that is giving is it uh, it the most yield in total investment performance performance a farm which strictly follows the primary assumption of the neoclassical theory of the farm will make its decisions on input and output based on the marginal effects of the component uh, in the profit equally uh, equation so uh, that's all for the second part of the uh, marginal economics uh, so if you like my videos please subscribe it my friends so i will discuss um, later uh, about the managerial economics part uh, three uh, my next videos on managerial economics part three so thanks a lot for watching my videos my friends thanks again